be used in Japan, I think that originally from Japan, also affects your pH in your stomach, it helps with the pH um, and the other things. Um, there are some digestive factors that we can use to introduce to help with um, digestion. Um, there are some agents that promote the flow of the bile that are very important for digestion. Probiotics, we already mentioned, and Stacey talked about lactobacillus and different, strength, uh, um, different strengths of the lactobacillus. MCFM is most a studied one. Um, you have to usually have to keep those in the refrigerator and um, use uh, appropriate amount of the lactobacillus. By the way, D deficiency is huge. Again, it can compromise your mucosal lining. Um, it can lead to increased susceptibility to the damage. So, God is on fire. You can use elimination diet, probiotics, vitamin D, glutamine that helps with healing, fish oil, curcumin. Also, ginger, peppermint oil. Magnesium used selectively. There are um, different types of irritable bowel syndrome, and there's a type where you have predominantly diarrhea. There's a type where you have predominantly constipation. So uh, this can actually worsen the constipation sometimes. Increased fiber intake. Uh, be careful with sweet based and cereal. Evaluate possible lactose intolerance. Consider other food and allergies. Like I said, you can be allergic to any food and help with stress. Um, and the principle number seven is recognizing and appreciating that all phenomena are connected. Everything connects to everything. And um, again, thank you so much for coming here today. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Also, how did you get involved with functional medicine? Did you want to explain that just a little bit? Um, yes, um, I was becoming progressively frustrated with treatment problems. And um, the conventional, thank you. <laughs> it's all white or black in America. It's either you are a conventional doctor and you have, have to follow protocols and FDA recommendations, or you naturopathic doctor. And I would I thought about getting this all connected for the for the benefit of the patients. We, a lot of patients not treated well with conventional medicine. Uh, patients with chronic problems, and you probably all know that. And um, I actually met my husband at the functional medicine conference, um, which and he is practicing functional medicine in Russia, and I met Stacy there as well. So that's how I got into, you know, introduced to DBC. But um, really looking forward to practicing that medicine. I think it's, it will be very satisfying for me as a physician to really help someone. So that's Thank basically. You. It's. Um it's easy if you come from a naturopathic or chiropractic uh, background to jump into functional medicine, uh, but with uh, with with uh, medicine in the medical world, it's it's a big philosophical jump. So, I think it takes a very special person to do that. One that's open-minded, one that can make connections. Uh, yes, have a bit of an ADD brain, and uh, so uh, so we have to commend Dr. DePolo for doing so. Um, so, so getting back to the gut and its relation to ADD, uh, wh where on earth is that coming from? Uh, uh, Dr. DePola explained leaky gut syndrome. That is one aspect of ADD. Leaky gut syndrome is a term that's been in use since 1908. Uh, this is nothing new. Uh, it's just we've come to appreciate what those old researchers have told us. And we know that with leaky gut syndrome, uh, we actually can get particles uh, of food undigested or maldigested into the bloodstream and yes it can cross the blood-brain barrier. It was a big debate for a long time but now we know that maybe that blood-brain barrier isn't as tight as we once thought and right at the base of the brain some things can escape into the brain and literally we can have an allergic reaction within the brain. Brain swelling has been noted with ADD with certain foods. Not only that but you can also get a neurotransmitter response. Did you know that 90% of your serotonin is in the gut wall? 90%, only 10% up here. So if we have an inflammatory response going on in the brain, or excuse me, in the gut, and it depletes serotonin levels in the gut, 
would it have an effect on the brain? So yes, ADD is nothing more than depression of the, gain of the brain in a, in a child. ADD is a form of depression. This is why depression is called a gut disorder in Europe. And you know what's really fascinating? Recent research in University of Groningen, which is my home country, has shown that antidepressants, which really blocks reuptake of serotonin, works on the gut wall as well as the brain and damages the gut problem further. So antidepressants, after nine months of use, causes an even greater response in the gut wall, which then re invigorates the depression in the brain and it becomes this whole cycle. This occurs after just nine months of use. So antidepressants, this is why it's such a controversial topic. You see the controversy coming again and again and again. Um, hormonal. There is so much research out of how the digestive system, and with the digestive system we're not only talking gut. She did put up a, a picture of the liver and how the portal system works. There is a lot of women struggle um, as we go through menopause, perimenopause. Um, we're seeing a lot of high LDL numbers, so their cholesterol panels are being off. One of the biggest things you have to look back for is, is what is the liver doing in relation to all of this? Because your liver has a big, big play in how your hormones are being inactivated and taken out of the body. If your, your body is not balanced, your methylation system is not working, we're not pulling estrogen or the inflammatory estrogens out of the body or the chemicals or the pesticides that you're getting through food or just through the air, then overall your hormonal system is going to be imbalanced, which therefore if we have a hormonal system that's imbalanced, we're also going to increase inflammation. Your LDL cholesterol, which cholesterol is the backbone of every hormone in the body, that, that LDL cholesterol is going to be inflamed because the rest of the body is inflamed. So we have higher LDL levels. That which traces back to the thyroid. You have to look back at the thyroid because most women <coughs> typically will tend, as they go through menopause, will also struggle with thyro thyroid problems. Those thyroid problems started 20 to 30 years before all that. The hormone problems started 20 to 30 years before all that. We've just ignored the symptoms. So when we look at hormonal deficiencies and problems, we always look to the gut and the liver and then the thyroid and adrenal access as well because those things all take place with what we're trying to deal with. So it's, it's very multifaceted when, when you're dealing with the gut. As Dr. Danvers said with ADD, it's the same thing. Everything works together. It just depends on where your deficiency or imbalance lies in the body and where you need to start at. Remember how we started with fiber to treat hormones? We kind of started the seminar with that. How, how in the world could that be? Fiber feeds the good bugs. That's all it does. Good bugs chomp on excess estrogen. 50% of estrogen regulation is done by your good bugs, the lactobacillus that Dr. DePola talked about. And um, so therefore, if you feed the bugs, the bugs then feed on the hormones, excess hormones gone, symptoms improve. Isn't that elegant? And it's so fun and so simple and so good. And yes, the, the, the LDLs that you talked about, that everybody's taking statins for, normalize on their own. Just all kinds of things fall into place on their own. Sugar starts fluctuating less, energy goes up, moods go up, memory improves. All of a sudden we're treating all kinds of different conditions. Yes, we are stepping on many specialists' feet and we love it. We there love it. There is no statistical research out there significantly that states that women really benefit from statin use. It's more of a men's thing. Women do see some statin lowering with their LDL, but it does not improve anything or, or help their heart attack risk or anything like that. So when you look at just, okay, let's just use a statin for women, it's not the way to go. You've got to look deeper. You've got to get in the trenches. You've got to get in there and maybe look at the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a digestive organ as well. Yeah. So MS, Alzheimer's, eczema. Dr. DePola really mentioned the skin thing. Uh, and um, the possible uh, link to, say, food sensitivities. We know, for example, that eczema, it's now classified as an autoimmune disorder, and it's really a gut disorder, very often connected in little ones to sensitivity to dairy. We know eczema and asthma often go together, and we know that these patients can maybe outgrow it, 